This is an example problem uh, of solving a circuit problem with multiple batteries. Uh, so we want to use Kirchhoff's law uh, and try and write down some loop equations and figure out the current in each part of the circuit, even if there are more than one batteries. Uh, I'm going to solve this problem twice, uh, making different choices as to what I think the current will do. And you'll see that in both solution 1 and solution 2, I end up getting the same answer. So I'm going to solve uh, any Kirchhoff's Law problem in basically four steps. The first thing I'm going to do is just guess what direction I think the current travels in each segment of the circuit. This is purely a guess, and if I'm wrong, that's okay. I'm then going to apply Kirchhoff's Voltage Law around each loop and I will go around each loop in the direction that I guessed the current will flow. Uh, if I happen to go through a battery from the positive side, excuse me, if I happen to go through a battery from the negative side to the positive side, that will be plus the battery voltage in my loop equation. If I go through a battery in the opposite direction from the positive side to the negative side, that will be minus the battery voltage in my loop equation. Uh, at the end, when I'm all done and I have solved for the current, if I get a positive number for the current, it means I correctly guessed the direction of that current. If, on the other hand, I get a negative value for the current, it means that the current has that same magnitude, but flows in the opposite direction as what I guessed. Uh, so here is the circuit I want to look at. Uh, this is actually a circuit that you saw in the learning module. I've just put some numbers into it so I can do some math. So the first thing I need to do is guess some current directions. And I'm going to guess that current comes out of the positive side of each battery. So I have I1 coming out of the left side of the 10 volt battery, I2 coming out of the left side of the 5 volt battery, and those two currents are going to combine in the bottom portion of this, of this circuit. So I get I total down at the bottom part of the circuit, I total being I1 plus I2. And notice that I total will again split up into I1 and I2 on the right side of the circuit. All I've done here is guess what direction I think the current might travel in each segment. But it is determined once I guess I1 and I2 that the bottom part of the circuit must be I1 plus I2 and it's determined that on the right side, I1 and I2 do split up again. So what I really guessed was the very first I1 coming out of the left side of 10 volt battery and I2 coming out of the left side of the 5 volt battery. So let me look first at uh, the outside loop and write that loop equation. Notice I'm going around this loop in the same direction as I just guessed that the current will flow. Uh, the 10 volt battery, I'm going through it from the minus side to the positive side. So that is positive 10 volts. Minus 4 times I total is the voltage drop across the 4 ohm resistor. Minus 7 times I1 is the voltage drop around the 7 ohm resistor. And Kirchhoff's law says that that has to add up to 0. The other loop I can look at is going through the 5 volt battery. I go through the 5 volt battery from minus to positive, so positive 5 minus 4 times I total is the voltage drop around the 4 ohm resistor. Minus 5 times I2 is the voltage drop across the 5 ohm resistor. Again, I'm going around this loop in the direction that I guessed the current will flow. And that all adds up to 0. So I have my two loop equations. I want to write everything in terms of I1 and I2. So I'm going to replace I total with I1 plus I2. I do that in each equation, and I have two equations and two things I don't know. I don't know I1, and I don't know I2. I want to combine these two equations in a way that gets rid of one of the variables I don't know. Uh, so I'm going to try and get rid of I2. So I'll multiply the first equation by 9, and the second equation by negative 4, and then add them together. Uh, when I do that, I get 70 minus 83i1 equals 0. Notice the i2s have canceled out when I add them together in this uh, combination. I can solve this for i1, and I get positive 0.843 amps. 
Uh, the positive number, again, meaning that I guessed correctly about the direction of I1. I'm now going to plug my value for I1 back into one of my loop equations. So I'm using the second loop equation. I've just replaced I1 with 0 0.843 amps. I can solve this for I2. I get, again, a positive value for I2, so it looks like I guessed uh, very well in this case. And I total, I define to be I1 plus I2, so I get a value for I total as well. Going back to our circuit, this is the directions that I had guessed for each of the currents. In this case, I1, I2, and I total all came out to be positive numbers, so all of my guesses happen to be correct. Uh, so I just want to label on here in each part what the current is and what direction it's flowing. So that top segment, I1, I guessed to the left. I found a positive value for I1, so I get 0 0.843 amps to the left. I2, I get 0 .8, 0 0.181 amps to the left. And at the bottom, I total is 1.024 amps to the right. And at this point, I know the current everywhere in the circuit and if I wanted to, I could use Ohm's law and calculate any of the individual voltage drops or calculate power, uh, anything that I might want to know now that I know current and resistance for each, each part of the circuit.